So we're going to get going. I'm first going to bring up Mike Klonsky. And good morning to you, Mike Klonsky. Good morning, uh, Mike. Uh, restaurant's never been looking better. It does look really nice in here. we got a great show in here. It's called Yes, We Bomb, and it is an exhibit of uh, posters and prints from a group of artists up in Madison, Wisconsin, and they're here through the end of April with some uh, challenging graphics. There's one of that guy, you, who initiated torture that has a word I can't mention on the air that says something you, and uh, we've had to do a lot of education with some of the customers who've come in here because they don't know who he is. So we've told them about he's the guy that gave the legal okay for Guantanamo, etc. cetera. Um, Mike Klonsky, uh, you and I go way back. I first remember meeting you at uh, the old SDS office back in 1966 in Los Angeles while I was moving around the country. Uh, you became a national... A uh, head guy in Students for Democratic Society, and uh, we were on different sides of some things, but we ended up going to the Soviet Union together to play baseball with Athletes United for Peace, and we've been uh, close comrades and friends ever since. So with all that said, what do you do these days? I, I, I can't believe that we're that old, uh, Mike, are we? I'm older than you. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, these, days, uh, these days, I've been uh, directing something called the Small Schools Workshop, and we've been kind of uh, plugging away for the last uh, 30 years, really, trying to uh, create some democratic schools and uh, learning environments for kids uh, that make sense, that are, are engaging, and that uh, keep kids from dropping out. And, and uh, so that's basically what our work has been. Well, you have you had a good run with this uh, outfit, the Small Schools Workshop. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about small schools. Um, I'm not sure where that's going in the time of uh, Arne Duncan being uh, Obama's education man. Uh, what's the status of Small Schools Workshop and your view on the future of uh, promoting small schools? Well, it's all it's all it's still contested territory, just like just like it's always been. Uh, right now, uh, uh, we're coming out of a period of the last uh, decade where we've uh, we've seen schools pretty much uh, run in the spirit of the, what. George Bush called the Ownership Society, uh, uh, and what comes with that is a, a, a more privatization, less uh, less public engagement in how schools should be run, and uh, much more of an emphasis on things like standardized testing, uh, privately managed uh, charter schools, and kind of negative, uh, what we think are negative negative trends. But also there's a there's a big movement still. Uh, fighting for uh, public engagement and, and uh, democracy and education that we, we still feel like we're a part of. Well, let's expand upon that a little bit. Last week we had uh, Don Rose, a well-known political commentator, uh, talk about the, kind of the state of politics from the world to the local. Uh, we talked about things under the new Obama administration. Uh, we did not touch on education. Uh, so maybe you could give our listeners a little bit of an overview about the, the state of uh, public education and democracy in public education around uh, not only Chicago but beyond. Well, uh, you know, when you talk about schools, you can't talk about them in isolation. I mean, uh, the, uh, one of the things that we've been trying to deal with is the fact that uh, you can't uh, put the responsibility uh, for reform simply on the schools. Uh, that uh, unless we unless we change the conditions in the community that a lot of kids in this city are living under, uh, you're not going to see a narrowing of the of the so-called achievement gap. Uh, uh, a new study's just come out, uh, really showing the impact of poverty on the lives of of kids, and not only on their lives in general, but on the, on their ability to. Uh, 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 do well in school. Uh, the kind of stress-related uh, conditions that we see uh, in a lot of these neighborhoods have really impacted, uh, for example, uh, what we call working memory. And as long as schools uh, are assessing, are being assessed, and as long as kids are being assessed simply on standardized tests, you're going to see this uh, widening gap between how poor kids and uh, children of color uh, achieve in school and uh, uh, as compared to uh, wealthier kids. Okay, we got a couple things going on here. We have um, uh, an emphasis on standardized testing mm -hmm. and exclusion, excluding people from schools uh, based on basically on class and uh, economics uh, and often race. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, you and I come out of a time when we used to talk about the other America, or some people did, and we talked about the war on poverty. We talked right. about uh, just uh, how America wasn't what it said it was. And we certainly are in a situation like that today where obviously a lot of people are becoming poorer. Uh, do you see the, uh, the uh, people in charge of kind of directing education? And I would say uh, Arne Duncan is the, the chief man now for... President Obama, do you see them understanding that, or are you seeing them moving in a different direction? Well, we've, we've, we've had uh, high hopes, uh, of course, for President Obama and uh, for Arne Duncan. We thought that, uh, you know, even though we've been very critical, we were very critical of Duncan when he was uh, uh, the CEO. You know, and that's what we call superintendents now in, uh, in Chicago. We call them CEOs, and huh. that kind of reflects... The business model. The business model of education, you know, which is an efficiency-based uh, model and uh, uh, a, a trend much more towards privatization. And here, uh, Mayor Daley, uh, since he's taken control of the schools, has been kind of the main man nationally in, in uh, eroding public space and public education in general and shutting down schools uh, by the dozen uh, and replacing them with privately managed uh, charter schools. What do you think uh, motivates a guy like Daley to move in that direction? I mean, uh, we've often said that he is really a Republican calling himself a Democrat. Uh, he certainly has been supportive of Obama. Uh, we hope Obama has a different view on education uh, and even Arne Duncan. But uh, what's it look like? I mean, uh, Arne is a, walks like a duck. Maybe it is a duck. Well, we're waiting, we're waiting to see. And not just waiting, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the things that's really been bothering me is that we, uh, we activists, you know, we community activists and education activists have now become uh, kind of non-participatory observers in watching Obama and watching Arne Duncan, you know, and, uh, and it seems to me that uh, we spend way too much time doing that. We've never done it before, you know, suddenly, uh, you know, we... We, we have we, high hopes for Obama. <laughs> yeah, not only high hopes, but... We run home to see what he did today. We, we become observers instead, uh, you know, when we should be doing our work uh, at the base. Uh, instead of looking for Obama to save us, I think we've got to save Obama. You know, Obama Obama is uh, being pulled in different directions. Yeah. That's that's yeah. very true. And what we've, we've said all along is that, uh, and Obama actually said, I can't do it without you, is that he needs uh, people to push him. And I think uh, Harold Washington did that as the mayor. Yes, that's and right. And I like to say that without uh, Harold, there probably wouldn't have been Obama in the presidency. Yes. But Harold used to tell uh, activists, uh, you got to tell, we got to push me. I can't just do this by edicts and decrees. Um, what do you think, uh, you know, you, being around the small schools workshop and an activist, you and uh, others uh, certainly came into contact with Obama on various boards. What do you think his real orientation may be around uh, public education? Well, what are your hopes? Well, one thing, I, I, I'm, one thing I'm happy about is... Uh, well, there's a few things I'm happy about. Uh, you look happy, Mike. I, I'm very happy for uh, for a number of reasons. One is, for the first time in over a decade, it looks like there's going to be real resources uh, shifted to uh, public education and especially early childhood. This has been an area where uh, the Bush administration's really been, really failed us. The second is uh, Obama is not a t is not uh, Obama uh, uh, is not a testing crazed guy. And it seems like uh, Obama and Duncan are are uh, going to have some good influence on the uh, reauthorization of what's been called No Child Left Behind, you know, which has been a real hindrance to uh, to public education.